Welcome back. So a few months ago I made a video showing these two solid state amplifiers that I built which are the size of a guitar pedal. Here's a quick demo of how they sound. Considering these are extremely compact solid state amps, I'd say the tone is pretty nice. Now in that video, I also mentioned I'd be coming back to show how I built them, so that's what I'll be doing today. But I'll actually just be focusing on this one since it's easier to build than the other one. And keep in mind that you can customize it with any type of preamp you want, including Fender and Marshall style preamps. Also, I wanted to mention that if you're new to DIY builds, then you should definitely check out my playlist on DIY Guitar Gear. The first three videos give a complete guide on how to build your own guitar pedals and covers everything from how to select which parts to buy, how to solder the circuit, and how to paint the enclosure and print your own graphics for it. Those same skills also apply to the project I'll be showing today. Let's first do a quick review of the specs of these amps and explain why the battery powered one is easier to build. So as you probably know, every amplifier has two main sections, the preamp and the power amp. The preamp is what gives an amp its unique tone, while the power amp determines how loud the amplifier can get, along with the speaker which also plays a role in both of those things. Now in my previous videos I showed various sites such as Tagboard Effects where you can find stripboard layouts for almost every pedal on the market. And it turns out these sites also have layouts for preamps as well. This is where I found the preamp designs for both of these amps and I soldered them myself just like I showed in my DIY pedal guide. But when it comes to the power amp section, I decided to use a pre-made board I purchased off Amazon for the battery powered amp. These boards are based on a class D amplifier which means they're extremely power efficient. But the other mini amp uses a power section that's built around the TDA 2050 chip which is a class AB amplifier. And I followed the schematic that's provided in the datasheet for this chip. I integrated this into a single board with a Marshall preamp design that I found on Tagboard Effects. But chances are not everyone will want that same preamp given how many other choices are available for other preamps. So that's why I think it makes more sense to focus on the first design where you can purchase this power amplifier board and then connect it to any preamp you want. Giving you more flexibility and the ability to customize the tone of your own amp. Another reason why I won't be going into detail on the second one is because class AB amplifiers aren't very power efficient and as a result they're not suitable for battery powered devices. That wasted power also gets transferred into heat which means the IC needs a heat sink or else it'll overheat. You can see how much space this heat sink takes up and I was barely able to fit it inside the enclosure. Also, while it is possible to configure it as a single-ended amplifier, the TDA2050 prefers to be powered off a dual rail supply, which means you'll need to buy a dual rail power supply or build an adapter board to split the single-ended power supply into two rails like I did, which adds complexity to the build. The benefit of a class AB amplifier is that they typically sound better than class D amps. However, these days, Class D amplifiers are a lot better than they used to be. So overall, I think the benefits of using one of these pre-built boards outweighs the small difference in sound quality. So that's why I'll only be focusing on this amp today. So now let's open this one up and take a look. Also, you might have noticed that this enclosure isn't metal. It's actually 3D printed from a design I found on Thingiverse. 
Generally speaking, I don't recommend doing this. Enclosures are made out of metal to help shield the device from external noise. But since this was just a prototype, I decided it would be more economical to print one instead. But there's also an advantage to using a plastic enclosure. It made it easier to attach the circuits to it. I use silicone adhesive to do this, and since the enclosure is plastic, I don't need to worry about the boards getting shorted. If you used a metal enclosure, you probably need to put something in between the board and the metal enclosure. This also made it easier to incorporate the battery charger board that can be charged from a USB cable. Since some USB cables are larger than others, I created an extra big gap in the enclosure for the charger, which would have been more difficult if it was metal. But you can actually leave out the battery and the charger and just use it with a DC power supply instead, so I'll be showing how to connect everything together with and without the battery. But before I show the layouts, let's first go through each component here. I'll include links in the video description for all the parts I'll be showing today. So we have the power amplifier board, the preamp board, the battery charger, and the battery. Let's start with the power amplifier. So like I said, this is a class D amplifier and it's based around the TPA3118 power amp chip. I was able to get two of these boards for only 8 bucks on Amazon. In case this particular brand is sold out, you can simply search for TPA3118 to find the same boards from other brands. Now the specs for this board list the input voltage can be anywhere between 8 volts and 24 volts, which gives up to 60 watts of power, and the speaker can have an impedance between 4 to 8 ohms. But let's now take a look at the datasheet for the TPA3118 to gain more insight into it. Let's scroll down to the graphs which show the supply voltage versus maximum output power curve, since the output power depends on the supply voltage. The graph on the left shows the curve using an 8 ohm speaker while the graph on the right is for a 4 ohm speaker. You can see with a 24 volt supply and a 4 ohm speaker, the amp can deliver around 60 watts with 1% total harmonic distortion, which is the blue line. And with a 8 ohm speaker, you can get up to around 35 watts with a 24 volt supply, which is still extremely loud. And if you don't need extremely loud volume, then you could use a lower voltage power supply. For example, with a 9 volt supply you can expect about 5 watts of output power with an 8 ohm speaker, or 10 watts with a 4 ohm speaker, which is still plenty loud for a bedroom amplifier. But now let's talk about the battery and the charger module, which also doubles as a boosting regulator. The battery I'm using is a standard 18650 lithium ion battery, but other batteries could work too, like these LiPo battery packs. These types of batteries are considered fully charged at around 4.2 volts and will discharge until around 3 volts where they're considered empty and need to be recharged. I 3D printed this clip to hold the battery from a design I also found on Thingiverse, but if you don't have a 3D printer you can also purchase clips instead. Now like I just mentioned, this particular charger module also includes a boost regulator, which means it can boost the battery's voltage up to a 27 volt output. The boost regulator is necessary for this project since the power amplifier requires at least 8 volts to function. The module includes a tiny trim pot which allows you to adjust the output voltage between 4.3 volts and 27 volts. In this case I've set the output to around 9 volts, which is enough to drive the power amp. If you set the voltage higher then you can get more wattage out of the power amp, but the boost module won't be able to handle the increased load and might burn up, which is why I recommend setting it to 9 volts. You should also use an 8 ohm speaker for better efficiency when using the battery. In the power amps datasheet we can see an 8 ohm speaker provides over 90% efficiency, while a 4 ohm speaker provides less than that. Now you might have noticed the module I'm using is green, while the one I just showed on Amazon is black. 
This one is the updated version and seems to be better quality than the older model which has quality control issues. If you get the old version you can expect only about half of them to work correctly, so I recommend avoiding them. I actually made a post about this several months ago since I've used this module in a few different projects. Just keep in mind the new version uses a USB-C port for charging rather than a micro USB port like the old one does. So now let's talk about the preamp section and then I'll show how to wire everything up. This particular preamp that I chose is a Laney style preamp that I found on Tagboard Effects, but they also have a number of other preamp designs as well. Just click the preamp tag on the side here to see a list of what they have. The vast majority, if not all these preamps will work with a regular single-ended power supply, with the exception of the first Marshall preamp they have here, which requires a dual rail power supply, or an adapter to split the rail. Other than that, there's some really nice layouts here of some iconic amps, such as a Plexi, JCM800, Fender Bassman, Diesel VH4, and more. Alright, we've covered all the main components, so now let's look at the layout showing how to connect everything together. I used pictures this time instead of doing a real schematic just to make sure everything's crystal clear. This layout includes both a battery and a DC power jack, so you can choose which one to power the device with. They're connected to this on-off on switch, so when the switch is in the middle, the device is off. And when the switch is flipped to one side, then the device uses the battery power. And when the switch is flipped in the other direction, the device will be powered by the DC power supply. However, keep in mind that connecting a power supply won't charge the battery in this configuration. You'll need to charge it with the USB port. If you wanted the power supply to charge the battery, then you'd need an additional regulator board but I didn't have space in the enclosure for one, so I didn't include it. Also, when wiring the DC power jack, pay close attention to the polarity. Most power supplies are center positive, but if you've built guitar pedals before, then you'll know that those use center negative supplies, so just be careful before you power anything. You can also add an LED just like you would in a guitar pedal. All you need is a current limiting resistor in series with the LED. Now as far as the preamp goes, most designs will have several pots for volume, gain, and EQ. But I didn't show the pots in this diagram since they're not really relevant here. But it's worth noting that the output for most of these preamps is actually on the volume pot. As you can see here, the output for this one is the second lug of the volume pot. And this is the blue wire here that gets connected to the power amp's input. Other than that, the connection should be straightforward. The input jack goes into the preamp and the output jack is connected to the out terminals on the power amp board. Now I'm sure there's some people out there who might not be interested in the battery and just want to plug it in like a normal amp. In which case you can follow this simpler design. If you want, you could also add an on-off switch which would be placed in series with the positive power rail. Remember, the power amp requires between 8 and 24 volts to operate, and the speaker needs to be between 4 and 8 ohms. A 4 ohm speaker will be louder but is less efficient than an 8 ohm speaker, which means your power supply will need to provide more current if you use a 4 ohm speaker. So if your power supply is between 18 and 24 volts, then it will need to provide at least 2 or 3 amps depending on the speaker. And if your power supply is between 9 or 12 volts, then it should be able to provide at least 1 or 2 amps depending on the speaker. Alright, so that just about covers it. Hopefully these diagrams made it clear on how to wire everything up. If you have any thoughts or questions then feel free to drop a comment and let me know. And if you like the video then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.